Welcome back to the studio at African Utility Week. I'm Rose Bundock, editor of metering.com. I'm joined now by Harold Hayes, um, Chief uh, Technical Officer at Landis and Gear Africa. Thank you for joining us, Harold. Thank you. Um, I wanted to start by talking about a study that was released this week that estimates that Africa will need 63 million meters in the next decade. Do you think that's achievable to have that number of meters in place within, within 10 years? Yes, um, as, um, as we've been speaking about most of the week is that English Africa, uh, above South Africa, uh, only 15%, 1-5% of people have access to electricity. When you go to Northwest Africa, only 27, 28% of people have access to electricity. So the requirement for health, education, everything, it's a requirement that new electrification must happen. There is a lot of investment in, uh, in generation, so the rollout of meters is bound to happen. Old meters to be replaced, yes, there will definitely be that requirement and will happen soon. So there's obviously opportunity there for meter manufacturers, suppliers. Um, where do you see the most, you know, um, where are the next big metering markets in Africa? Well, when you run that type of thing, the, the, the biggest thing is look at where, where the meters, where, where the current population is and where electricity is today. So you look at Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, that is where a lot of the electrification has happened and that's where the, the boom might be. South Africa must still be completed and they're leaning towards smart. So we would see that the smart meter, the smart prepaid meter boom should happen very soon because the utilities are guaranteed of their revenue. So I would look at those markets. Ghana possibly as well, a large meter market. Okay. So do you feel that that is the best technology at the moment, the kind of prepaid meter with some smart functionality? The problem we had with prepayment, prepayment has done well and it still will, will still, still do well. But the customer lost contact with the meter. So we never had meter readers, we never had people regularly inspecting meters. So the customers would be paying for electricity, but when they were out of electricity, they would tamper with meters. Mm. Uh, or they, they would just, the meter would go faulty or any other reason and we'd lose that track. So having a meter online, having a prepaid meter online would be the win and guarantee the revenue to the utilities. So forget about all the smart features, time of use, all these other things. The importance is having a meter online, having prepayment, guaranteeing your money, then you got a win-win. Okay. And you, you, you spoke this week about the importance of standardization um, in the metering market. What's, what standards should Africa be looking at? The best answer to that question is if you're following prepaid SDS. Prepaid SDS, in the beginning we had South Africa that um, started with five companies that made an SDS meter and everyone believed that prepayment is prepayment SDS is a South African standard. Today there's 120 companies that are represented on the SDS association, 412 devices that can be bought from all over the world. And all the utilities now have options. They can buy prepaid meters from anybody. Um, and prepayment has been success. And showing that there is a standard and you can force people to a standard, that is saying that this is doable. So now moving to smart, we need to follow the same standard. So we need to say, okay, take the IEC STS standard as a prepayment model, but then make a standard in terms of the communication medium, the concentrator, so that the utilities have options to swap out meters and not be tied into one supplier, like they've done with prepaid meters. So that would be a, a definite win. They must follow standards. You, you'll be talking later at the conference on interoperability. Uh, what are the main challenges for that in Africa at the moment? The main challenge is uh, probably, is going to probably price. People, I wouldn't say product dumping, but they say we have a solution and we can do it at X price cheaper than what is being offered as an interoperable standard. Mm. Because being interoperable costs money. You need to, your tests are independent testing. You need to send it out to other test houses. So someone else will bring a solution saying, yeah, we can show you that it works. Once they buy it, that's it, they're locked in for life. So having, that would be the challenge, that someone is not um, duped into going into a direction and saying, okay, that looks better, but they lose the, the interoperability. What would your advice be in that kind of uh, due diligence stage for utilities? What should they 
be looking for when they're considering technologies and, and suppliers? Well, what was nice with the interoperability, there's in, in, in the instances, if you look at the, the prepayment, that's um, an external body that gives the approval. So it's not, not a meter manufacturer, it's not a self-disclosure. There's an independent body that will do that test. Interoperability, for example, on G3 PLC, that then has been taken by Kima and by an independent body. So the manufacturer itself doesn't state that I'm compliant. Someone else will say, these are the tests you need to do and you need to meet that compliance. You get that certificate, you put the logo on, then you know it works and there's no doubt it will work. So then that should be something that every utility is looking for. Yeah, I, I, last night I actually read the term, what is the definition of interoperability? And that is just saying that you must be able to put a device or a system on the ground and the customer must be able to implement it with very little effort. So that's interoperability. So you can change any different customer's device. So we're not saying it will be exactly the same. Not all devices will be exactly the same. But you'll be able to put that device down and with little effort, the customer will be able to make it work. So do you see um, African countries that have had their fingers burnt by sort of going with the wrong technology or? Yes, definitely we've seen customers paying more than they should pay. Uh, once they bought a, a meter, they're paying very high prices for meters because they have no other alternative. Mm. They have to buy that meter because that's what they put on the ground. And in some instances, as much as twice. A normal meter price or a, an STS meter, they're paying double the price because they locked into the market. Mm. We were talking earlier about um, tenders, I'm um, oh, sorry, um, pilots, pilot schemes. Um, pilot projects for utilities, and you mentioned that in Africa they're not always successful. Could you kind of explain a bit more about that? Our experience with pilots in a, in a lot of instances, I'm not saying all, but definitely the majority of instances, when we run a pilot, the manufacturer runs the pilot in that country. Because the utility is not allocating staff. If they want to run a pilot, they may say, here's 10 staff, and I have an IT person, I have a metering person, I have a marketing person, and they get allocated to the project and each person gets their task and dedicated to the pilot project for the full term. What normally happens is the supplier comes in, runs the pilot and everyone sees, okay, it's successful. And then they issue a tender, but they have not documented or learned from the pilot. All the pilot has told them is, yes, the meter is smart and you can do these things, but they're not taking ownership themselves. Okay. So the advice would be to make sure you're you're fully engaging with the pilots. For, they must allocate staff. So the utilities must say, we're going to run a pilot, take people, they, they must stop doing their normal office work. They must be allocated to the project and run with the project from beginning to end. And the utility people themselves write their own report in terms of this is what we need to do to make this rollout work. So what would be an alternative? You know, if, if the pilot's not kind of working, is what would you kind of suggest? Do you take utilities to see uh, systems in other countries so they can benchmark? Well, you see, going to see other utilities, yes, you can learn and you can get the questions and people will give you ideas in terms of the challenges they faced, but you will not have your own learning. Mm. So if, you, if you're not going to run a pilot, yes, go visit other utilities, make your notes, but then make sure that you allocate three times the amount of staff you thought you would to the project because mm you will need to put that additional resources in to make the project work. And what about the, when the projects are actually, um, or when the uh, rollouts are on a larger scale, are you finding that utilities don't have the right staff in place to sort of manage the whole process? No, no, no. Uh, we've, we've seen projects where they, they install meters at phenomenal rates. So when a project is running, the back office is in place, everything is working, they, they can get up to speed and they can mm. they can really install meters, teams of 800,000 meters a day, that's not a problem. Okay. But identifying the site beforehand, making sure that the wooden pole is, hasn't been eaten by ants and you can mm. actually mount the meter on a pole. That, that, and so identifying the area beforehand to roll the project, that's where it is, the problem. It's not really implementing the solution. It's what is the infrastructure on the ground like to put this equipment on. That's what takes time on rolling out big projects. And we were talking, um, you were talking yesterday at the conference um, about segmenting your customer group. Um, what would be the advice there for utilities? 
example differently and the, the segmentation there specifically for me passionately talks to time of use. Uh, in Africa there's many people that can't change, they cannot change when they go to work, when they come home, mm. when they do certain things at home. So implementing a time of use might not be the best option. Um, but it does not say don't put in a smart meter or a meter that is online because the customer can be learn and get educated in terms of what the what it costs to to boil a kettle to use the oven mm. to do these things because th that is not there so there is that benefit but to to identify your tariff beforehand to say these customers will be on this tariff uh, and these other customers will do a time of use tariff and they will be able to move load they will pay a higher price for electricity at certain times of the day that is very important so before you go to the ground identify all your customers your customer bases and why you want to put a specific meter type mm. to a specific customer. So I'm not saying don't put online meters into a low consumption customer because there's benefits to the customer mm. in the long term. Uh, high end customer, yes, you, you, what you want him to do is use less power, but that education would come from seeing his in-home display and moving load out of that area. But other people might not have the same. So a different tariff would be implemented on those different customers. So okay. the sale to the customer would be different. And lastly, uh, Landis and Gear, well, what's new? What are you bringing to the show? Well, for so. us, what's new to is G3 PLC uh, that we, as a as a as a group, have now standardised on on G3 PLC with many other uh, meter manufacturers. So, if you walk around the show, you'll see lots of G3 signs where mm -hmm. there's uh, many meter manufacturers that are joining the alliance, chip manufacturers. So yes, we want to have G3 PLC out in a hurry. Okay. Um, and I'm hoping that South Africa will have the first G3 meter on the market from Lannis and Gear Group. Well, when can we expect to see that? Uh, I'm, aiming, I'm aiming for early next year to market. So my okay. pilots will start running this year and uh, early next year to market. Excellent. Thank you, Harold. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, I'm Rose Bundock at African Utility Week. Stay tuned.